Hello and welcome to Mel Make Stuff. My name is Melissa and today I'm going to be telling you about a test knit I just finished for Hohi Locatelli's new linen top. This pattern originally calls for Espastrico's Petit Lin Plus, which is a 100% sport weight linen. And I wasn't sure how quickly I would be able to get that from Canada during COVID times. And because this was a test knit, I sort of had to turn it around a little bit quickly. So instead I decided to sub in something that I already had, which is Dando Yarns DK Cotton. So right away I did something that I do not recommend, which is that I just went ahead and started knitting without swatching, which is pretty stupid, especially with like a linen or a cotton yarn. You never know quite how a new one is gonna behave. It ended up working out for me for a few reasons. So I've done a lot of knitting with non-wool yarns before, and I have also used the thinner um, fingering. It's really more of a lace weight version of this yarn. So I had some idea of how it was going to behave. Most non-wool yarns tend to grow lengthwise instead of widthwise when blocking. So when I first started knitting this, I just wanted to make sure that I was getting reasonably close to the stitch gauge so that I could get a relatively accurate width. I decided to start knitting with a US 7, which was the manufacturer's recommended needle size for the 21 stitch gauge that I needed, even though the needle recommended in the pattern was a US 4. So this is another instance where you really need to be swatching if you're not familiar with what your yarn is going to do. This was a judgment call on my part based on prior experience with non-wool yarns. I could tell just by feeling the Dando yarn that if I were to try to go ahead and knit it on that US4, it would be way too tight, way too tight of a fabric. I also decided to start right away with wooden needles. These non-wool yarns are super inelastic and there's just no give in them whatsoever most of the time. So I find that the little bit of give that's provided by a wooden needle makes it easier on my hands to knit and it's also not slipping all around like it would be on a metal needle. The other main reason that I felt okay about starting without swatching is the construction of the top. So you start by casting on a couple of stitches just for one shoulder and you'd make like a tiny short row wedge and then you do the same thing for the other shoulder and then you connect them across the back and start knitting down. I figured because I'm making one of the smaller sizes and because the stitch gauge is actually quite large, for me a 21 stitch gauge is sort of on the higher end of what I tend to do. So I figured even if the gauge ended up not working out and I had to rip out, it wouldn't be that many more stitches than I would have cast on for a swatch anyway. So that was sort of my other reasoning there. Since I had done this stupid thing and just gone ahead and started the top without swatching, I did a lot of frequent measuring of my gauge for the first couple inches of the back. And what I was finding was that I was getting gauge with the US 7, but even though I was getting gauge, I was getting some wrist pain right in here. I was knitting, um, holding the yarn in my left hand, and I was having to tension it a little bit too tightly in order to maintain that gauge. So this seems a little bit counterintuitive, but what I decided to do was go down a needle size to a US 6, just right in the middle of the project, like four inches down from where I started just to see if that would enable me to tension the yarn just a little bit less with my left hand to prevent getting that wrist pain. Cause I could tell that it was just gonna be a real slog to get through the whole project and also could potentially cause myself an injury, which if I couldn't knit during COVID times, I honestly do not know what I would do. At this point, I knew I would have to rip out if changing needles like this created an obvious difference in the gauge, but as you can see, it turned out totally fine. I couldn't even tell before blocking where I had switched needles, so I think this was definitely the right call. Every time I had to join a new skein of yarn in this project, I used the Magic Knot join. I ordinarily wouldn't use that join in a garment, but I decided on that for a couple of reasons. With the relatively open gauge of this top, Anything that was going to require me to weave in ends was potentially gonna be a little bit too obvious from the right side. And with the tape construction of the yarn, another join like a Russian join or uh, like a tube yarn join that I might use for a non-wool yarn were not really options in this case. At first, as I was knitting along, I felt like this join was sort of obvious, but it's actually not that easy to see the join in the finished blocked garment. So I think this was the right choice. This top went by really quickly. Like all of Hohe's patterns, the instructions were super clear even at the test knitting phase. So when it came time to block this, I went to the Dando Yarns website to see what they recommend because I didn't really have an idea of how this was gonna look or what the best process was for blocking. Since the yarn feels so papery, I wanted to make sure that whatever I was about to do for blocking wasn't gonna ruin it. So the website says this, thick and thin characteristic makes for a unique fabric. The yarn has a special coating which aids in moisture absorption and evaporation to keep you cool in warm weather. 
God knows what special coating means. I didn't find it to be particularly thick and thin either, but okay. For blocking, it says, wet block, lay flat to dry. You can tumble dry without heat a couple of minutes if you feel the fabric is stiff. Only do this a few minutes to retain the coating around the yarn. So I decided to block as normal, which for me means wet blocking with a little bit of eucalyptus or soak and then laying flat to dry. You might have gotten this from the Ellery video, but I'm not a super fan of putting my knitting in the dryer for a number of reasons. With these types of non-wool yarns, even if they feel stiff, I like to let the garments break in naturally through wearing rather than trying to speed up the process with the dryer. Using the dryer for something like that is also going to shorten the life of the garment over time, and that doesn't make a ton of sense to me when I've spent some amount of hours of my life working on this. Here's a detailed shot of how the finished garment fits. For reference, my actual bust measurement is 35 inches, so I made the third size and I'm wearing it here with about one inch of positive ease. You can see that it's a bit see-through in the twisted rib panels in the front and back, but that doesn't really bother me since it's meant to be a casual piece. Um, I'm wearing it here with a light colored camisole underneath and you can wear something darker underneath if you want it to be a little bit less obvious. I really like how this yarn feels after blocking. It's got a lot of drape and it's actually not stiff at all. It's not super soft, but I wouldn't expect that from a 100% cotton yarn anyway. And I think it's got this really nice drape, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like it's gonna stretch out of shape at all. I would definitely use this yarn again. There's a limited color selection, but all of the colors are really nice. So there are a few others that I would use. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this finished object video. I believe Hohi has just released this pattern both on Ravelry and on her website. So if you wanna make one of your own, you can find it there. See you next time. Bye.